students in the locomotion and reproduction lesson you have learnt about uh, the types of pseudopodia then uh, the sol gel theory in detail you have learnt then different theories that illustrate the amoeboid movement in protozoa that also you have learnt here now the next is the types of flagella on the basis of the distribution of mastogonemes you have learnt here now now we shall focus on the remaining part of this lesson here now that is the flagellum or a cilium if you take cross section here now the flagellum or a cilium has got a vibratile filament this vibratile filament is called axoneme or axial fiber this axoneme or axial fiber arises from blepharoplast arises from blepharoplast which is also called basal granule or kinetosome or basal body here now now the axoneme cross section when you take here now it reveals 9 plus 2 arrangement here now in the cross section axoneme reveals 9 plus 2 arrangement here now that is where the se uh, center of axoneme here now there are two microtubules which are called central microtubules here now the central microtubules are covered by an inner protoplasmic sheath and at the periphery at the periphery there are nine microtubules here now where each microtubule is paired each microtubule is paired so we have nine microtubules like this where each microtubule is paired 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 9 whether there are nine peripheral microtubules in this peripheral microtubules here now the outer one is called a microtubule which is slightly bigger than b microtubule i repeat this once again here now so there are nine microtubules where each peripheral microtubule is a double here now where they can be named as a microtubule and b microtubule the outer one is called b microtubule the inner one is called a microtubule and a microtubule is provided with a pair of short arms a microtubule is provided with a pair of short arms all these arms are oriented in the same direction all the short arms are oriented in the same direction then the central microtubules are connected to the a microtubule of the peripheral by means of certain radio spokes the central microtubules are connected to the a microtubule by means of certain radial spokes like this there are certain radial spokes here now by means of which the central microtubules are connected to peripheral microtubules the central and peripheral are collectively covered by an outer protoplasmic sheath both of them are collectively covered by an outer protoplasmic sheath then each peripheral microtubule is connected to the adjacent one by a joining cytoplasmic strand like this this cytoplasmic strand which helps in joining the peripheral microtubules to each other are called nexines are called nexines and the short microtubules that are given off from a are also called dynein arms the short microtubules that are given off from peripherals are also called dynein arms so here the mz point of view or other exam point of view remember total number of microtubules in this you can say nine peripheral that is 18 and two central 20 altogether 20 microtubules are present the central microtubules are unpaired the central microtubules are unpaired whereas each peripheral microtubule is a doublet here now the central microtubules are covered by an inner cytoplasmic sheath an inner cytoplasmic sheath and the central are connected to each peripheral by means of radial spokes you know peripheral microtubule it has a microtubule and b microtubule 
A microtubule gives rise to a pair of short arms, which are also called dynein arms. You now, these dynein arms are short arms carry an enzyme called ATPase, which is responsible for hydrolysis of ATP. And peripherals, they are connected to one another by means of certain cytoplasmic strands called nexins. Okay, so that is with regard to the internal structure of axonin, which is common for both cilium and flagellum. Here you now. If you take uh, the blepharoplast that gives rise to the axonium here now, blepharoplast consists of only the peripheral microtubules. You know. So, in a blepharoplast, only peripheral microtubules are present, where each peripheral microtubule is a triplet. Each peripheral microtubule is a triplet. Each peripheral microtubule is a triplet like this here you now. Okay. It does not have central microtubules. Only peripheral microtubules are present, where each peripheral microtubule is a triplet like this. The central microtubules are absent. The third microtubule, as it enters the axonium of the flagellum or cilium, it is broken to form two short arms. You know. Okay. So that is with regard to the internal structure of a, a blepharoplast or a basal granule that gives rise to cilium or a flagellum. The centrosome or centriole gives rise to blepharoplast, the blepharoplast in turn gives rise to axonym here. Now. The blepharoplast in turn gives rise to axonym. The flagellar movement here now, flagellar movement, okay, the hymen called flagella and cilia undulopodia hymen called flagella and cilia undulopodia. Okay, now. now, the flagellar movement is of three types here now. Sidewise lash, conical gyration, simple conical gyration, sideways lash, then the third one is effective and recovery strokes. Effective and recovery strokes. You know. So, sideways lash, conical gyration and effective and recovery strokes. You know. Under the sideways lash, you now, suppose the flagellum, this is the organism here now. The flagellum undergoes undulations from tip towards the point of origin here now. The flagellum undergoes undulations from the tip towards the point of origin. It, the organism is pulled forward. The organism is pulled forward which is called pulling force. This is called pulling force. It is comparable to propeller of an aeroplane. Propeller of an aeroplane here now. Okay. The flagellum undergoes undulations from tip towards the base here now. A result animal is dragged forward which is called pulling force, okay. comparable to propeller of a, an aeroplane here now. Sometimes the flagellum here now undergoes undulations from the point of origin towards the tip here now. From the point of origin towards the tip, okay. from the point of origin towards the tip, all the undulations are created at the point of origin and it extends towards the tip here now, then the animal is pushed backward here now. The animal is pushed backward, this is called pushing force, pushing force here. This is propeller of a boat, this is an example for this here now, where the flagellum undergoes undulations here now from the tip, from a point of origin towards the tip here now, the animal is pushed backward, we call it pushing force you know. And sometimes the flagellum is kept on one side like this and undergoes undulations from the point of origin towards the tip here now, then the animal moves in opposite direction sidewards, animal moves in opposite direction sidewards, okay. So like that the three of them come under sidewise lash here you now, okay, pulling force, pushing force and sidewise lash here you now. Conical gyration. The flagellum is bent on one side, 
undergoes undulations vigorously in a spiral manner from point of origin towards the tip here now the animal also moves in opposite direction in a spiral manner along the path here now the animal also moves in a spiral manner along the path in opposite direction here now. okay that is here the spiral movements are noticed in this the animal moves sideways but in a simple manner here now does not undergo spiral movement this is comparable to a screw getting inserted into a wooden plank here now in the same way the flagellum is bent on one side undergo series of serpentine movements from the point of origin towards the tip here now the animal moves in opposite direction in a spiral manner here now then this effective and recovery strokes here now the flagellum okay if uh, bends on one side here now okay and thereby pushes the animal forward by undergo by creating a series of currents in the water it is called effective stroke here now the flagellum first remains straight and it starts undergoing series of serpentine movements here now as a result of those serpentine movements the flagellum is bent on one side creating several currents in the water and all those currents push the animal forward here now and that is brought about by the contraction of the axonym the effective stroke is brought about by contraction of axonym and expenditure of atp that's why it is also called propulsive force you know then recovery stroke is brought about by the contraction of outer cytoplasmic sheath of axonym here you now and it doesn't require atp and it is a passive stroke you know recovery stroke is considered as a passive stroke and effective stroke is considered as a propulsive force or the effective stroke you know this uh, effective stroke requires atp recovery stroke does not require atp you know because along with the currents only the flagellum once again comes back to the normal position you know so like this this kind of movements you know uh, the sideways lash conical gyration and effective recovery strokes are noticed in the flagellum or a cilium you know they are common for both flagellum and cilium you know if you highlight the differences between the flagellum and cilium you know which is again important m set point of view or other exams point of view the flagella and the cilia differentiate between both of them here now the flagella are usually the long whip like cilia are short hair like cilia are short hair like the flagella are usually less in number whereas cilia are more in number cilia are more in number the flagella are confined to a part of the body instead of being present all over the body confined to a part of the body whereas cilia invariably are present all over the body cilia are present all over the body you know now the flagella are with mastigonemes or flimmers they are with mastigonemes or flimmers they are with mastigonemes or flimmers here cilia do not have mastigonemes or flimmers you know they do not have mastigonemes or flimmers you know then this flagella they undergo undular movements they undergo undular movements whereas the cilia undergo pendular movements in the cilia undergo pendular movements you know the next one here now the flagella do not form compound organelles they do not form compound organelles whereas they form compound organelles like cirri undulating membrane membranel they form compound organelles like cirri undulating membrane and membranel serum okay whereas in case of the flagella those compound organelles are absent you know then the flagella do not exhibit metachronal synchronal movements metachronal and synchronal movements 
whereas they exhibit metachronal and synchronal movements. Okay, cilia exhibit metachronal synchronal movements. You know. Whether you differentiate between cilia and flagella. You know. Usually flagella are long whip like, cilia are short hair like, flagella are invariably less in number, cilia are more in number. Flagella are usually confined to a part of the body, whereas cilia are present all over the body you now. They are with mastogonemes, whereas in cilia mastogonemes are absent. Then the flagella exhibit undular movements, whereas cilia exhibit pendular movements. Then the flagella do not form compound organelles, whereas cilia fuse to form compound organelles like cirri, membranes, membranelles, and all. You know. Then uh, the flagella metachronal and synchronal movements are absent among them, whereas cilia exhibit metachronal and synchronal movements. You know. The flagella usually which are arranged in longitudinal row the cilia which are arranged in longitudinal row they vibrate one after the other and this kind of movement is called metachronal movement and the cilia that are arranged in transverse row that are arranged in transverse row, all of them vibrate at once and this kind of movement is called synchronal movement. It is called synchronal movement. So, cilia of transverse row, if all of them vibrate at once, it is called synchronal. The cilia that are arranged in long terminal row vibrate one after the other, it is called metachronal movement here now. Then the cilia Apart from this, they also form infraciliary system and neuromotor system. In the infraciliary system, kinetosomes are connected to each other by a cytoplasmic strand. Kinetosomes that are arranged either longitudinal row or transverse row are connected to each other by a cytoplasmic strand called neuroneme. It is called neuroneme or kinetodesmal fibril. Kinetodesmal fibril. Kinetodesmal fibril. Each neuroneme extends up to fifth kinetosome. Extends up to fifth kinetosome. As a result, at each kinetosome, five neuronemes are present, five neuronemes are present and this bundle of neuronemes is called kinetodesma, kinetodesma, single is called kinetodesmal fibril or neuroneme, a bundle of neuronemes is called kinetodesma, many kinetodesma of either longitudinal row or transverse row collectively form a kinety. The kinetodesma that are arranged either long tunnel row or transverse row, many of them collectively form kinety. You know. All kinetes put together give rise to infraciliary system. Give rise to infraciliary system. All the kinetes collectively form infraciliary system. The infraciliary system combines with motorium to form neuromotor system collectively combined with motorium to form neuromotor system. You know. What is motorium? The network of cilia that lies over the cytopharynx of the ciliates can be called motorium. The motorium combines with infraciliary system to form neuromotor system. You know. The neuromotor system controls and coordinates the functioning of cilia in all ciliates. You know. 